Hi, welcome to my show. Today we're going to do, uh, we're going to actually make this lantern, and this is made out of um, a, the juice containers like this. Um, you can use the milk containers, as long as they're the cartons, the paper cartons, it'll work. And the first thing you're going to want to do is draw your lines where you're going to cut um, your little frame out. And you do want to leave a good amount on either side um, just to keep it sturdy. And you can see I have the black line is me. I, traced, I drew the lines. And you're going to do it on all four sides. And you're going to cut out the bottom. Hi, Kristen. Okay, don't forget to cut out the bottom. And the bottom is a little bit harder to cut. Um, I don't think a craft knife is going to do it. When, you know, your, um, what do you call it, exacto knife? Um, I would use, like, a utility knife. Yes, mine has a plastic spout, and all I'm going to show you, um, where did I put that? I put an example somewhere. Oop. I had one cut open so I can show you how I uh, worked it out, and I'm looking for it. Ugh, see, I wasn't prepared again. I know I have it over here somewhere. Since I got on early, I can search for just a second. Oh, I know where it is. Okay. So let me start with that. Um, once you get this cut out with your craft knife, and I'm not really going to um, do all four sides because, you know, this is probably the most time consuming is sitting here. Oh, my blade keeps moving. There we go. For some reason. Okay. And you're just going to follow your straight edge down. And you're going to want to do a couple passes. Don't go through, try to go through this in one pass because um, that's when people like get off the straight and narrow with their cut. There it goes. And if you don't get it perfectly straight, don't worry about it because we're going to cover it with paper and it's, it's really no big deal. You know, get it as straight as possible. I know a lot of people have trouble um, using a craft knife and cutting um, a straight line. And I really don't have any tricks to um, give you to make it easier on you. All I can say is just go nice and slow. It you definitely, this is not something you want to rush when you're cutting with um, an exacto and a uh, straight edge. quite go through. A nice smooth um, drag. So all four sides are going to look like this. They're going to have like basically a frame, okay, and you're going to cut, like I said, all four sides. Make sure you draw lines first. Lines are very, very important. 
There is no, um, no, you don't have to be on the straight and narrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's very challenging to cut these because it's, you can't lay it down like it's on a flat piece. You actually cannot put a lot of pressure either because you'll crush the container. So just watch your pressure when you're cutting these. Okay, and then like I said, the bottom, you still want to leave um, an edge. Okay, um, just because it provides a little more stability. Um, so it's not as tippy. Well, the best thing to do if you can't cut straight is to really use a, a ruler. And another thing you could try using um, is like a rotary cutter. I'm not sure if it'll cut through this. I haven't I haven't had a rotary cutter in years, to be totally honest. But I know that they make them, and they're just like a straight edge. And some of the boards that they have for them, the um, rotary cutter blade fits in this groove, so you can just line it up and, you know. But that would be a little difficult for something like this. But you just do the best you can. If, you're, if your sides are a little funny, you can always go in with a pair of scissors and just kind of try to even it out so it looks um, the same width all the way down and at the top. Okay. And now let me get to the spout. I'm going to put this aside. I opened this up so it's just easier for me to show you how to do this. So all I do is I cut, I cut it, I split it, can you see that? I just split that. And then I'm going to push it through to the inside. And once you get all your sides, um, your frames cut out on the sides, you can do this. And then all I do is I grab one edge. And sometimes they're a little tricky. And don't worry about ripping the material, the paper, because this, remember, this carton has that plastic. Um, you're just rip ripping the, um, the plastic coating. So I just ripped it out, and you can see that I got a kind of a little mess in there. So that's all I do. I just ripped it out. I don't mess around. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, and save these, because guess what? These make awesome tags. Put your paper on it. You know, you can straighten up the edges a little bit. Put some paper on it, and they're nice and sturdy for tags. So don't throw these out. I have a whole bin of them. Okay, so let me move a few things out of my way. Now, uh, the next step that I did was I gessoed the top. Oops, there goes my camera again. No, don't cut your box apart. No, 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 no. I just cut that one apart so I can show you better how to rip out that center thing. No, all you're doing is cut. It's going to look like this. Okay, all four sides will be cut out, and your bottom. You're going to leave your top intact, and it should stand up, okay? Alright, so then our next, like I said, the next step would be to gesso everything. The only reason why I put gesso on it is because um, some of these cartons have, like, dark lettering and stuff and if you're using really super um, light paper and that's what I suggest this is paper paper this is not cardstock paper you need to use like a lightweight paper for this a cardstock you're going to have trouble wrapping around to the inside and I do that for all these um, edges we're going to wrap the edge so make sure you use paper. And the paper that I am using tonight, let me set this aside for just one second, is called Keller Kurtz 
and Company, and this is um, from the Paper Studio line at Hobby Lobby, and it has some really yummy, and when I say yummy, I mean yummy, yummy, delicious, yummy paper. There's a, another one. I have some of these out. I'll just show you a few here and then I'll flip through the rest of the pad. There's some lovely, lovely vintage Parisian and um, shabby chic images in here. And there's some delicious, look at that black and white, or black and cream and tan. There's this black with the um, advertisement on it. There's like 180 sheets in here. There's some ads. There's some words with roses. Isn't this paper gorgeous? I said I wasn't going to flip through all these, but my gosh, i got to show you the paper. But you get three sheets of every single one of these papers. Plenty of paper to do projects with. There's some more of that black tan and cream. This is really pretty, really vintagey. It's got little roses in it. And then it's got this really ornate black um, filigree with the ads behind it. I don't know if you can see the ads, but there's like ads behind it. Really pretty. Some um, script writing. More little ads. Yes, I got this at Hobby Lobby. Ugh, Hobby Lobby. And I got it for 50% off. So the paper pad's $19.99. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, it's single-sided and it's very thin paper, but um, this is a darker pink of what I'm using. This is a lighter pink and this is a darker pink. And there's this one, and this is what I did the roof with for the other um, lantern. There's like all kinds of just like little stripes. Um, there's ones with sh like the vintage shoes. Little roses and like a navy blue. And you saw that one because I had that one out. Some typewriter keys. Oh, yeah. It is called... Keller, Kurtz, and Company, and it's made by the Paper Studio, um, and that's Hobby Lobby. They have little cherries. I'm going to quickly just try to get through this really quick, and then I showed you that one. This beautiful just some really cute paper. I'm getting back. I'm trying to get back to these really cool there's that sewing machine that I showed you. Um, here's some programs from theater. You get three sheets of those. This really pretty blue um, and like gray colored floral. Keller, Kurt and Company. Yep, you got it. Little iron work. Really pretty. And old sewing ads. Then you got your stripes and a little um, purple, like lavender 
roses and then you have this one that has a pretty ad. little geometric prints and there's more um, script writing with roses another kind of filigree looking with music sheet behind it and then you have um, this one has a dress form and the little sewing notions on it And then, of course, you got this green floral. There's some more ads. Some strawberries. A little um, vintage ladies and dress forms and a sewing machine. Really pretty paper. Some purple lighting. This is my favorite. The perfume, the Paris perfume add then you got the little green floral a little tan floral vintage telephones a little patchwork vintage patchwork um, another big cologne ad which I'm going to take some of these sheets and just um, put a frame around them and hang them in my dining room. And you just got um, some more floral. Let me see what else we have. And that's what I'm using on the roof um, today. Is this one? I think it's this one. Yeah. And there's that light pink. And there's the black and pink floral and the vintage ladies. Oh my gosh. I'm taking up so much time showing you this paper, but I just had to show it to you. And then there's a stripe and another little floral. And another little like filigree looking. Um, they have it in this, and then I also got it, they have another um, paper pad called Haberdashery, and it's the same paper, except it's on craft, and it's glittered, and like has glossy images, and this is more of like a vintage looking. I'll just show you, I'm just going to flip through it, see how shiny that is? The butterflies. There's an old vintage chair and some old silverware. They just got some really gorgeous patterns in here. This one, I love this one. Yep. Little vintage settee and chairs. Little postcard. Some of this paper is the same that was in that paper pad, but it's only printed on the craft and it's a little glittered. There are some different images in here, but okay. So, enough about paper. Hobby Lobby, and it's 50% off right now. So I got both these paper pads for the price of one paper pad. They're $19.99 each. Yeah, it's by the same company. It's uh, Paper Studio. Alright. So... Um, what I do now, um, I'm not worried about seams right here because I cover this with lace and I cover the top part with lace. So you only get like bits and pieces of it. As you can see down here, I covered the seam 
it went all the way around, I put lace. And then up at the top, I put lace around the top too. Okay, so I just cut some straight. lines. I kind of measured how much this was and then I doubled it and then I added uh, a quarter of an inch on each side because you want to be able to wrap this around. Okay. And I'm going to use some Maj Paj to glue this down. Um, I'm not trying to make you drive 40 miles to buy the paper. I checked online. They don't have it online. Hobby Lobby online. Apparently they don't sell this paper online. So I just add the Maj Paj onto here, it's just less messy. And when you cut your paper, you want to make sure that you cut it so it reaches the top up here and the bottom down here. Okay? So then I am just going to, I'm going to turn this sideways, it's just easier for me to work this way. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and stick this down. Alright, I got a good hangover. So I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to add some glue on, or not glue, Maj Paj, on this side, and we're going to do all on the corners first. You want to do these corners first. So when you go to um, cover up the seams, it just works out better. And I'm just folding the paper over and just kind of making sure that it creases nicely on the corner and it adheres really well. If you have little pieces that are popped off, and make sure you press on the inside. You're going to want to get them down like I have one down here. I want to get that glued down and I want to get this top part glued down. Like that. These ones you want them to hang over into that middle section. So I'm just going to leave that for now and I'm going to work on getting this other corner um, piece on and then we're going to fold the paper over onto the inside. Yeah, I like I like the Maj Paj better. I think um, I don't know. I mean, I like score tape for some things, but this definitely is not a, a score tape project to me. So I'm just gonna eyeball the center. Oops. And. that down just a little too much. And then I'm going to flip it over and we're going to add some Maj Paj on this side. Um, these little strips, uh, how I measured them was I measured what I, what was the outside of the frame and then I multiplied it by two and then I added another quarter inch to 
that because we're going to, you have to wrap this around the edge. So whenever you cut your frame out, um, everybody's will probably be a little bit different, so you're going to have to measure as you go along. But I'm going to say these are about, probably, and I just glued that one down, so I'm going to have to measure it out for you. That's, well, that's one inch right there. And then another half inch. So it's about one and a half inch uh, strip of paper. I'm just working some of these bubbles out. There's a few little bubbles in there. I'm trying not to get Mod Podge everywhere. I do have to say, squirt tape probably would have been neater. Okay, so now I'm just going to go in. Now hold this, hopefully where you can see. Uh, you're probably not going to see this one. Let me snip this one and then I'll show you on the other one. You're just going to go in and snip right down. Let's see, can I get the angle? Okay, so basically, let me turn this over. Where your bottom of your frame is, you're just going to snip it. In on both ends, and this is what's going to be folded over and then glued down. Okay, and pre, like kind of pre-score these, fold them, because when you go to put the Maj Podge on, sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate. So I find that pre-folding them works really well. Two more sides to do. Alright. And last one, and then we can glue these down. I'm just going to open them up and slip some Maj Podge in there. Alright. So we're just going to put a little Maj Podge in here. And fold your paper over and Sometimes it gets a little, doesn't like to stay. You might have to play with it, but the Maj Podge. And I'm just going to fold that edge down. I am recording, you guys, so you can always go back and watch. Okay. So, let me get the other side opened up here. And we'll get that glued down. Oops, that one didn't want to stick. See, sometimes they don't like to cooperate, but you got to make them cooperate. What do I call this? 
This is a lantern. That's what I call it. And you can put um, a battery operated candle in this and um, some suggestions. These make awesome Christmas gifts. Um, you can put pictures of your kids, your family, um, print them out on vellum and put them in here and put the candle inside. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with these. Oh, someone asked what it was. It is going to be this. A little lantern. Well, it's not really little, but you know what I mean. Just making sure that this paper is finally sticking because it's being difficult today. Okay, so I have all four of my corners, and you can see it when it goes over the sides a little. This one I completely did just to cut some time out of my, with the class. Now, these pieces, and I will measure these up for you, these pieces are about three and three quarters of an inch long and they're almost one and a half inches wide okay and these pieces are going to go here and here and I will show you and they're going to go from end to end. So when you put the Mod Podge down, make sure you put it all the way to the end. And you're just going to line it up. And give it a nice press. Make sure it's sticks really good. And I'm just going to do the um, all the bottom pieces and I just I have a whole bunch of strips here. Just make sure whatever you're using. No, I can't turn off my autofocus. I know it's this camera I, it was in a very expensive camera, and I keep telling my husband I need a new one, but I just got this not too long ago, and he's not happy with me. I want a camera that does not have an autofocus, because I know everybody complains, and I am so sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I thought I was getting an awesome camera. Well, turns out it's not that awesome. And it doesn't have that feature where you can turn off the autofocus because it's an HD camera. So we got all the sides done. Let me wipe up my mess here. And now we're going to do the same thing where I am going to cut, and you might be able to see this better. Let's see. Can you? Well, 
If I wasn't left-handed, you could see it. <laughs> Darn left-handers. I'm just cutting um, down to the bottom and along the side edge just to make the little flap. So all mine are flapped like this. And I will stop so you can... Come on, camera. All of them are like this. We're going to cut these pieces off down to that edge and don't worry if they're not straight we're covering them up okay so this is the first thing I'm doing especially when you're messing with Maj Podge you kind of want to get these little pieces out of the way Um, another way you could do this is if you want, didn't want to take the time to measure out, um, you could just rip and just put pieces all over. You know, do like a collage kind of thing. I'm trimming down these because they're a little too long, but I always say it's better to be too long than too short. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold them in. Okay. Getting all my little scrap pieces out of the way here. I don't want accidental glueage. <laughs> okay. So I am going to add my glue. And then you're just going to fold your piece. And do that again over here. And my Maj Podge. Keep calling it glue. Well, it is technically glue, but. And just fold that piece right down. And one more, and then we have the top pieces, and then we can move on to the roof. Or no, let's not do the roof first. Let's put the screens in first. I just have these top pieces I gotta put on. Wow, the chat just like stopped. Is it me or you guys are just focusing on what I'm doing, aren't you? And the same thing, you're gonna want to put it all the way from edge to edge. And you're gonna stick paper down like that give it a nice good press okay making sure that if you're wondering why I stop for a second before I stick this down and making sure the words are going in the right direction because these uh, this paper has like words on it
are just going to stick their last piece down. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the bottom. And if I'm going too fast for you guys, I am recording. Okay? You can always go back and rewatch or listen. So I'm going to do the snipping again. to get it so you guys can see it, but me being left-handed makes it very difficult. Okay, so I'm just going to fold my pieces up. Get a nice little crease. And then we're going to trim off these little edges here. And I think I'm going to trim these off too. They're they, they're kind of a little too wide. We're just going to put some Maj Paj. And we're just going to fold our piece over. Like that. And put the next piece here. Take it and fold it down. We have one more piece. So how did I come up with this idea? Well, I really don't know. It just kind. I looked at the milk cart and I said, "Wait a minute! This looks like a um. This could be a lantern." So I just started playing until it looked right, and I was like, okay, works for me. Okay. Let me clean my fingers for Maj Paj, because guess what? We're all done with it. Okay, Bunny, question? Go ahead. Just cleaning off my fingers, guys. I don't want to transfer Maj Paj onto uh, my screen. And we're going to talk about those in just a minute. But first, and this is just something you can do. You don't have to do. If you want to leave the paper the way it is, that's fine. I like to shabby chic it up just a bit. So I'm using some um, light-bodied gesso. And I'm just going to get a little bit on the brush. And I'm just going to 
brush it in spots here and there, different directions. And this dries pretty quickly because, oops, that was a little heavy. You don't want to cover up all the words, but I just want it to look kind of old or shabby chic or however you want it to say it. That was a little heavy up here. You know what? I need a paper towel. You almost want to dry brush the... You don't want uh, a lot on your brush. And you're just going to go around and just do this really quickly. Don't put any thought into this. Don't sit there and... And I make sure I get the edges really good. Just put it on willy-nilly. This is not something that you have to sit here and think about. Oh, gee, how am I going to put this on? No. You just go around as long as you uh, wipe off the excess with the paper towel like I'm doing. You will be fine. And it's okay if you get heavy in spots because it just makes it even look more shabby chic. That was a little heavy, but that's okay. I'm just putting very little on my brush, too, by the way. But I'm making sure I'm getting this inside edge really good. And I think I got it all covered. So that's kind of, you can still see um, the words, but in spots, but it just has a little bit of white on it. That's all. Alright. So we're done with that. All done with gesso. So, I am going to talk to you guys about um, how I made the screens. Um, for some reason, my printer would not take um, the vellum sheets. So, what I had to use and I'm going to get it out for you. Here's the vellum. Okay. What I had to use was it's the computer computer graphics. It's clear adhesive back printable transparent plastic sheets. And I will hold it steady. Let me tilt it that way. Okay. Um, what these are, let me get one out for you guys, so I can show you. We 
you can see how shiny this is. Well, what this is, is just like this clear plastic. Can you see where I pulled it back? And it's on, it, it has adhesive on the back of it. And what I did was I took some of the paper that I, that from that paper stack, and I put it in my scanner, and then I printed it onto the sheet. Okay, and because it was adhesive back, what I did was, I took um, a piece of vellum, and I used white vellum. Unfortunately, I'm out of it. I have to go get some more. I use a lot of vellum. Um, and I printed these out on a whole sheet. So this um, 8 and a half by 11 will do two of these, of the um, lanterns. So let me find one that, the one that shows up really good. Here we go. So what I did was the full sheet, I peeled back the plastic sheet and I stuck it right to the vellum. Okay. And then now I'm going to cut out the screens and put this in. Now, let's say, okay, well, I don't have these plastic sheets. Well, you can print right on your vellum. Or, if you have some of that paper lace, and uh, right now all I could find in my collection was some Christmas paper lace. And you know what I'm talking about, it's like all cut out, okay. Um, you can stick this onto a sheet of vellum, or you can just stick it right on here. And this, I mean, doing the snowflake one, I'm actually going to make these for Christmas presents this year, I think, and give them the battery-operated candle and do the snowflakes. I think that would look really pretty inside there. Um, another thing you can do is sometimes you can buy pre... Some of the paper companies have vellum in their paper collection. And let's see off the top of my head. Grabbing... I'm trying to think of which one I have that has uh, the vellum in it so I can show you. Anyway, sometimes the paper, when you buy paper pads, uh, can Company does it. They put uh, a couple sheets of vellum in there. You can also use this sheet of vellum, and it's usually decorative with the paper. Yeah, the paper lace. Um, if you don't have a printer, or a scan, I shouldn't say a printer, a scanner and printer, um, you can always stamp. Whoa! Oh my goodness, I just had an avalanche. Sorry. Um, you can always stamp right on your sheet of vellum. Find some pretty stamp and stamp it. That always works too. There's always a way. Always. Always, always. Um, you can also use um, the transparencies that they use for those overhead projectors. And these are clear sheets. I actually found one. I couldn't find these earlier, and that's what I wanted to use, so I ended up using that adhesive back. But these are just clear sheets, and you can run them right through an inkjet printer. And they can also be put in there. Okay, so now that I just gave you a whole wonderful 
bunch of stuff that you can do these. Let's get our screens in before we put the roof on. Because when I made the other one, I put the roof on before I put the screens in and it was very difficult. So remember, put the screens in before you put the roof. Okay? So I need to measure these. So I'm going to say if I cut it out at three and a half inches wide, and you want an overlay because you got to glue it on the inside, by... seven inches long. We will be good. So I'm just going to move my stuff out of the way because I got to swing my arm out here. Ah, still not out of my way. Here we go. So let's see. We wanted three and a half inches. And this, this, um, that plastic sheet is really thick, so I have to put a lot of pressure to cut it. By seven inches, let's see. Oh, I don't, and be mindful when you cut, so you're not cutting off a head, because that just looks odd. So, sometimes you might have to flip it around and cut it from a different direction. So there's one that I've cut. And I actually, oh, you know what, you guys? You can actually do three with one eight and a half by eleven sheet of um, the, tr the plastic sheet and the vellum. So I'm going to get all my screens cut first, and then we will move on to adhering them into the lantern. Um, do not try to cut this plastic sheet or even the transparencies with uh, a guillotine cutter because it slides in the cutter. Just a little tip. Oh, I kind of don't want to cut off the Paris. Let's see if we can do it this way. I gotta trim it down on this side just a wee bit because I wanted to keep that Paris. Oh, I kind of want to keep that hot couture too. Oh, I have it up there. Okay, we're good. So I have all my screens cut. And we're going to glue these in. And I am just using the Beacon 3-in-1 to glue these in. And this is very quick. i got to get my glue down to the bottom here. 
and you want a good bead of glue okay don't put a wimpy little uh, obviously you don't want it to ooze out but you do want it to be a good enough amount that it's actually going to adhere to that um, screen and it's not going to move or pop out So then I have my glue down at the bottom there and I'm just going to take this and you kind of have to bend it to get it in there and then you're just going to line it up. Oop. This one is a little too wide and make sure you keep your paper cutter handy because sometimes you got to trim down like I just did. So I'm going to have to trim this down a wee bit before I can glue it. Alright. There we go. And give a nice firm press so it actually it, the glue is it's adhering to this So there's our first screen. So before I put the second one in, I'm just going to make sure I don't have to trim it down. I probably will. Yep. I think I'm going to trim all of them down. I just kind of rough estimated the, um, opening. Alright. That should do it. Yep. Okay. So we're just going to get that glue. And you kind of have to come in at all angles to get this glue in here. Just warning you. Kind of a little bit of a tedious task, but it's well worth it. Okay, and then we're just going to slip this in. And we'll line it up. and give it a nice firm press. And my suggestion is when you do this make sure that um, whatever your whatever screen you're gluing down it's um, on a flat surface so you can give a nice good press on it. Alright. So I already know I'm going to have to trim this down so I'm just going to do it. So now you're kind of not going to be able to see what I'm doing now because I got two screens in. So now it kind of blocks your view. But you saw me put those two in, so. Like I said, you're going to have to, you know, kind of angle this around so you can get glue in. Isn't 
It is doable though. The last screen is always going to be your trickiest because you don't have little holes that you can go in. You only have one opening that you can go into, or actually two openings. You can go through the bottom here. I'm sorry, I had to lift it up away from you guys so I can see what I'm doing. Last thing I want to do is put glue where it doesn't belong. And do not use hot glue, especially if you're using uh, vellum or any of these plastic sheets, because it will melt. Okay, last screen. And this is the tricky one to get, make sure that you get it lined up right. Alright, yeah, I think I got it. Okay. So there are all my screens. And now we are going to work on constructing the roof. And that is will be our last part and then to decorate with the little roses or whatever and the butterflies and the lace. Okay, so this is a three inch circle. You're gonna need one of these and you're gonna fold it in half one way fold it in half the other way and you're just going to trim to that center line along one of the lines just like that. So you're going to have a little like a Pac-Man. <laughs> okay. And now comes the tricky part. You are actually going to make like a little cone. So you're going to line it up. The inside is going to overlap and the outside is going to overlap. And then you're just going to glue this down. And I just have hot glue. Super fast. So now you have a cone. And you're going, what in the world is she doing with a cone? Where is this going, right? Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we have to snip up two sides here. You don't want to snip up all the way. Maybe um, half inch. And this cone is going to go right up on this edge through the slits that you just cut on the side. You're going to want to make sure it's centered because this is what your house is going to set on. Or your house. Oh my lord. I can't talk tonight. Um, your roof. And you're just going to take, I'm going to lay this down. going to hot glue these sides down. This is why I don't use hot glue. I don't like all the strings. Yeah. Small hands. Well, now there's a good enough opening in the bottom to, to do what you need to do down there, but, you know, it is a bit tricky. I'm going to be totally honest with you, just a tad. Don't get frustrated. It will work, I promise. little 
corner to glue. Okay. So now we're going to make our rope. I'm setting this aside. And I am getting out the wonderful and beautiful scoreboard. Okay. I have cut my paper. This is uh, four and a quarter inches wide. And you are going to do this roof. You are going to need um, two of the same sheets of paper. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take these. Um, you can cut. You can make your roof uh, the paper as long as five inches, or you can make it as short as four inches. It just depends on how much you how much hangover you want. Five inches, obviously, you're going to have a little bit more hangover. Four inches is going to be a little less hangover. So I'm going to put this up here, and you're going to score every half inch. So I'm going to score at the half inch, and I've already pre-scored these. The one inch, the one and a half inch, the two inch, the two and a half inch, the three inch. You're going to go all the way down. Okay? So you should have four of these all scored. And I'm going to move this aside. Yes, it's a milk curtain. Or a juice curtain. Whatever. Okay. So, you're going to start folding one down. And you're just going to continue folding. And I always make one extra, so we're only going to really be using um, three of these sheets. But um, sometimes you need it a little fuller, so you need four. So I always make sure I do one extra just for that purpose. And I'm just going to um, sand fold it all the way down to the end. there. And the scoreboard makes this easy. If you don't have a scoreboard, you can just use a bone folder and a ruler and a straight edge. And score your lines every half inch. Alright. So if you notice this when I started I folded down. So you're going to have two that are folded down, you know, your start. And then this one, I'm going to start by folding it up. Because we have to put these together. So you kind of want, you don't really want a big overlap, you just want to overlap the one little part of the fan, this part here, when we put them together. And I'm working quickly. I'm trying to. Oh, we're definitely going to be probably another half hour or so. Maybe more. We'll see. It's all because I had to show you guys all that darn beautiful paper. Okay. Wasn't in the screen. Sorry. I'm trying to do this very quickly. Okay, 
So we have two now that we started by folding the paper so the white is facing towards you. And then we got two where we've started folding it down. And I have blue all over me. So now you'll see what I mean. When we go to put these two together, we only have to glue on the w one spot. See, now if I had two going the same direction, we'd have to glue in two spots. We don't want to do that. So we're going to move this one over here. And to put this together, I'm using the Aliens Quick Dry Tacky Glue. And you're just going to line them up and glue them and make sure that they go your ends match up and everything. Just like that. Alright. And then we're going to glue this one to that one. And then we're going to test it to see if we need that um, fourth piece. And you just kind of slide it in. Like that. Okay. So I'm going to kind of fold these up. And what I'm going to do is actually run this around. See if we can. We may need a fourth one. If it pulls too much, you may need a fourth. This one doesn't look like it's pulling too much. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it. And this one is going to, you are going to have to double it. It's going to be a double glue. Ooh, I got too much. Alright. So there you have a lampshade. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, it's a big rosette. See? If you guys watched me make the paper lace medallions, it's the same kind of concept. Okay, so now here comes the fun part. First of all, I'm going to kind of get this. here and around this might be a little bit of a tricky so I just want to put I'm going to flip this over and I want to put a little bead of glue And try not to burn your fingers and do it with hot glue. Okay, this is not... Okay, here we go. I 
I'm just putting a little ring of glue, um, not exactly in the center, but around it, so it kind of holds the the shape just a bit. And I shouldn't have touched it. There we go. Well, it kind of did. Until I touched it and removed the hot glue. I don't know why it's not holding on that one side, but that's okay. We got it good enough. We just needed it to kind of make the little cone shape like this. And this is all going to be covered up, so don't worry about that. And we got to go kind of around and see. Okay, we're going to have to cut these two ends off here because these are going to interfere. Alright, let me get my Tim Holtz. Yep, four and a half by twelve paper. These are kind of, your ends over here are kind of interfering with this laying properly, so make sure you cut, ooh, that flung. You cut those two ends off, so you should have like little beveled edges up here at the top. So now this should lay right. Hopefully. Let's see. Don't worry, we're going to glue it. So now you kind of have to hold it till the glue dries. I'm waiting for the hot glue to dry. Apparently I put too much and it's just not drying. Or it's just too humid for it to dry, one or the other. Alright. Okay, so it looks a little wonky and we're going to fix it. Don't worry. So you're going to need a little bit of hot glue underneath here just to hold this side down just a wee bit. Just like that. And a little bit under there. And we have And I'm just going to spin it around. I'm trying to see, make sure that I have it all nice and leveled and even. And it's not like kitty wampus or anything. And the next thing I did was, this is uh, a Cherry Lynn dye. This is the Italian Lace Doily. Okay, and 
what I'm going to do is on these lines right here, I'm going to fold down in the middle. And this paper is like really super sturdy, so just like that. And you're going to do that to all the lines. You can use just a regular paper doily too that you get it, um, you know, like the baking section at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. They have the little paper doilies there. You can use them. You can use a crochet doily if you'd like. I just chose to use the paper one. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, you kind of, like I said, you, that cone that we put up here, you kind of want to position it and center it and glue it right on the top, just like that. You can see how it's kind of glued. And you kind of want to make sure you're even all the way around. And if you mess up and you're using hot glue, you can hit it with the heat gun and loosen the glue and reposition it. And right now I'm just folding up this um, Cherry Lynn die doily. This is the Italian lace. This is heavy cardstock. Alright, so then the one that's in between, I'm just going to give it a little pinch at the bottom. Just a little pinch. kind of folding it in half and pinching it at the same time. Just like that. So it kind of looks like this. Okay. And that is going to be glued right up here. And you're just going to center it. And then I'm putting some hot glue in here. I'm going to hot glue this sucker on. Oop. Okay. Hang on. It's being difficult. Alright. Now it should hold. Okay, and then for that little knob part in the center, this is actually one of those big giant um, bead things, and I'm just going to put a whole bunch of hot glue around here, and we are going to glue it into the center at the top. And I'm just going to stick it right. And yes, it's going to push the lace up a little, this paper doily up a bit, but that's okay. We can play with it. 
You're going to want to hold it there for a few minutes. Let that hot glue set. Make sure it's straight. While it's setting up, i got to pick some of these hot glue webs off. And then for around the bottom part of the knob, um, this is, well, I call fog feathers. I'm sure there's like shabby roses. I get them on Etsy at a store called Fog Feathers. And she hand dyes these. So what I'm going to do, let me get, I'm actually going to cut the center out of this. I'm going to cut it open. First, I'm going to trim this uh, mesh. Frog feathers. It's actually a store on Etsy that sells these shabby roses. Um, they're made out of chiffon fabric. So I'm just going to cut around. Basically just cutting this center part out. And I'm just going to trim down this just a wee bit because I don't want it sticking up past uh, the knob. I want actually the knob to be where it's going to be. And you can actually see it. So I'm going to grab the, my um, Beacon 3 and 1. Hi, Christine. And I'm just going to put, well, I'm going to put the bead of glue around here because I'm going to scrunch them up. I'm going to start on one corner and then I'm going to scrunch it. just scrunching this. If you're wondering what I'm doing. I want it to look shabby. So I kind of dressed up the knob just a wee bit. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to look at each one of my panels and decide which one I is going to be the front and that I'm going to put the roses on because you don't want to cover up too much of... Um, your screens, otherwise people aren't going to see these beautiful images on here. So, 
Um, the last one I did, I used this one, so let's see. I think we're going to go with, this side's going to be my front. So I'm just going to flip it over here, and we're going to put some lace on this real quick. And I just happen to have some of this, um, it's like a creamy white colored crochet lace. Then I'm going to put along the bottom, because remember I said we're going to cover up our seams down here. Oh, I did have the right side. I hate when I can't figure out which side's the right side for lace. So I'm just going to stick this lace down. around, cover up your seams, just like that, and then I'm going to snip this off. And then we're going to just put um, a little trim up here. So now I'm going to put, you can put the same lace or you can use a different lace. Let me just see what else I have over here. We're almost done. All I got to do is put the roses and the butterflies on after I put this lace on. So yeah, I like that. That'll work. That works. So you're only going to get like a glimpse of it peeking out. Like I said, you just want to, you know, cover up your little seams up here that we did with the paper. And this actually kind of gives a nice little um, semi touch, putting the little lace on. Not a crazy amount of lace, it's just enough. I got to get off my screens here. Alright, so I decided that this one was going to be the front. The one I decorated. Actually, I kind of like. We're going to go for this side. So I have some um, mulberry roses over here. So I'm just going to um, glue them down really quick.
five. Escape. And then I'm going to glue down a few butterflies. And I think I'm going to have the big one going this way. And I'm going to kind of put him up high over here. And put this one. I have a smaller butterfly. And this one is going to go like this way. Just like this. And then I have some watches scrap. This is the Finesse Swirl Pearls in White and number 6074 that we are going to use. Oops. And I just cut these apart. And I'm going to use just this half here. And this is going to go. You don't want too much because you don't want to cover up too much of your screen. And this piece, I think I'm going to put I'm going to cut this little piece off actually. I'm going to use just this little piece. And I gotta give my little butterfly a little trail, a little flight path. Kind of got off kilter there a little bit. And we're gonna cut um, this one in half too. And same thing, I just cut it a little bit smaller. We're going to stick it on the other end of the rows. And I think we are going to give that our little butterfly up there. Well, actually, he's the bigger one. He needs a little flight path. I do. I need your address. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. That is our little paper lantern and like I said if you put a battery operated candle in here um, this one is really this is one of those tall ones I would get just like a half a uh, half this size um, I don't know what they call them but you stick that inside and can you see the glowing
So like I said, these are awesome, awesome Christmas gifts. Um, beautiful displays for your table. You can make them all different. You can make a little Chinese lantern if you want to for the Chinese New Year. Um, you can use the paper lace paper. You can use vellum. You can use um, the sticky back plastic transparent film that I used and vellum. Um, you can stamp images on vellum. Yes, watch the recording. And be, I will probably take a little bit of the um, uh, gesso to the roof, too. That's what I did to this one. Now, see, this one's a little bit higher because I made this roof, um, this one right here, I made this with uh, five inches. So it's got a little more height to it than this one does. Um, the butterflies I cut from um, a paper collection that I had a while ago. And the flowers, these come from Wild Orchid Crafts. Um, they have beautiful, beautiful uh, mulberry flowers. Um, they're, they are located in England, but if you order from them on a Monday, you will get your stuff the following Monday. Yes, there is. There's a lot you can do with these. You don't even have to do this kind of roof. You could do a straight roof if you wanted to. Um, get it, make it out of chipboard, and maybe put some paper, you know, pretty paper on it. I just wanted to show you guys something just a little bit different. These would make um, awesome wedding gifts if you put you uh, print their picture on vellum and maybe th the date of their wedding on one side, uh, maybe a nice little uh, love poem on this side, you know what I'm saying, maybe a copy of their um, wedding invitation over here, print them out on vellum, that would be so pretty. Yep, there's a lot you can do with these. You gotta use your imagination. I hope you all had an awesome time tonight. I didn't do too bad. It's only nine forty three. <gasps> Thank you all for coming. 